The big question is, why did the attorney general do this? We were told it was just to be transparent that he was just going to be talking about how executive privilege was not waived uh, and uh, his decisions on redactions, et cetera. Uh, but it actually was what the Democrats feared it would be, which was the, the attorney general getting out there and getting his narrative, his take on it, uh, as, as vigorously as possible. It was basically, Jeffrey Tubin, a repetition of that March 24th letter when he concluded that, yes, the Russians did interfere in the U.S. election, but no American, whether anyone involved in the Trump campaign or outside of the Trump campaign, illegally did anything to help the Russians. It, it, it was much more ringing in its endorsement of the president's conduct than even the, the press conference uh, se several weeks ago. I mean, it was an extraordinary political commercial for the president. I mean, this was a, a discussion of the sympathy and the difficulty and the, and the challenge that the president faced and how, notwithstanding all of that, the White House cooperated. However, he left out the fact that the single most important piece of evidence <laughs> that the president, that the Mueller investigation could have gotten, they didn't get, right. mm -hmm. which was an interview with the president exactly. of the United States. So this enormous, you know, th this uh, the, the president faced an unprecedented situation, and there was speculation in the news media, and isn't it a very sad thing for being poor Donald Trump? But all of that is is put forward based on a record that doesn't include a sworn testimony from the president of the United States. And, Kerry, uh, the attorney general said that special counsel Mueller uh, highlighted 10 instances for the mm -hmm. obstruction charge uh, and that he and Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein didn't necessarily agree with Mueller's interpretation of his legal theories in terms of whether or not it was obstruction and ultimately con concluded there was insufficient evidence. But I know we're all going to be trying to look at what those 10 instances were when we actually get the Mueller report. Exactly. We're going to, we're going to look at what is the factual scenario that the special counsel laid out and, and was the attorney general and the deputy attorney general's judgment as a matter of law correct. And so we'll be able to see that. But I have to say, the attorney general had an opportunity this morning to rise above the politics and to adhere to institutional justice department, just sticking to what the process was that he was supposed to talk about and which he said he was actually talking about, yeah. and he blew it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just came out and to say that the president took, quote, no act that deprived the investigation of witnesses or documents when, as Jeffrey just said, the president, like other presidents have in the past with investigations, been willing to be either interviewed, be willing to be interviewed by the special counsel's team, in addition to all the things that the president tweeted against witnesses and people who were involved in the case that could potentially be um, taken by them as aggressive or intimidating. It's just not a true statement, what the attorney general said just now. And, and that piece, he should have stuck to the process, mm -hmm. because on the process, he actually is being consistent with his commitment to transparency. We'll see the report, but he says he's giving most of it to members of Congress, even the information that is uh, redacted in the public report. Congress will then be able to go and challenge the 60 information in court if they choose to. So he should have stuck to the process. And we should point out, Carrie, that before the press conference, you were praising Attorney General Barr, saying that if he does what he says he's going to do and just outline in the spirit of transparency, executive privilege, the interactions with the White House and the redaction process, it's great. You were applauding him. If he stood, I, ha I have given him the benefit of the doubt. If he, stu if he would have stuck to the actual process, then I think he would have risen above the politics of it and he would have been able to say that he is just performing his role as attorney general. These gratuitous statements about the media, the gratuitous statements about the, the way the president um, has been impacted by the investigation, that was completely inappropriate for the attorney general. And, and Laura, I have to say, I mean, six or seven times saying the same sentence over and over and over. Uh, and look, uh, theoretically, the American people should be happy that there is no evidence that Mueller could find. Mueller, a highly respected uh, investigator and law enforcement official, uh, he could not find sufficient evidence uh, that there was conspiracy by any American knowingly or by any member of the Trump team. That's great news. But Barr repeating it over and over and over again, six or seven times, I mean, that's, that's a little excessive. Uh, <laughs> in, even in Washington, D.C., where people stay on message mm -hmm. uh, like it's a mantra. It was excessive and suspicious to be pounding the table and pounding over the American people's head 
particularly if the looming question for many is, okay, if that was the case, then why were there so many lies told after the fact? But also, with the first 10 minutes of his entire discussion, I thought to myself, didn't the president at first once ask, where's my Roy Cohn? Oh, well, I guess he may have found him today because he should be pleased with the person who now serves at his pleasure. Because this person spent an inordinate amount of time talking about, I mean, the Oprah moment of the feelings of the president of the United States. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. What I thought to myself was, well, naturally, you would have these 10 or so discrepancies and differences because you wrote an 18 to 19 page memo before you got the job outlining why you thought obstruction was going to be completely an untenable position to take. And now you have a controversial um, uh, dynamic at play here where you essentially said, well, my self-fulfilling prophecy is now complete because I have the ultimate decision and the prerogative to say what happened here. I have one part that I, my, I honed in on when he said, apart from whether the acts were obstructive, this evidence of non-corrupt motives weighs heavily against any allegation. Are we dismissing the very note, the obstruction of justice element that actually concerned two former presidents of the United States? He is the head of the executive branch to be dismissive of, aside from whether or not it was, you know, aside from your, the, the play, how was your night, Mrs. Lincoln? Mm -hmm. That was the moment I took from this and thought, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Barr, but did you intend to give us a sound piece, a sound bite of the president of the United States, or what you intended of the process, as Kerry was talking about? And I just want to point out that President Trump has just tweeted uh, 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 an image. Uh, what would you? What would you? It's, it's, kind it's of Game of Thrones, Thrones. Game and it says yeah. no collusion, no obstruction. Uh, game over. Win, because... Precisely what the uh, so... what the president wanted to hear from the attorney general. Pamela Brown uh, has a specific question she wants to ask our, our legal team over here. Pamela, go ahead. Well, one of the things that stuck out to me um, in the early on in what the attorney general had to say was about the Trump campaign individuals being involved at all in the dissemination of those hacked emails. It seemed to me, Laura Coates, that the attorney general didn't rule out that anyone on the Trump campaign participated in or encouraged the publication of those emails, but rather it wasn't illegal because no one on the Trump campaign, the Mueller team found no one on the Trump campaign actually was involved in the hacking of those emails. Is that a correct understanding? And, and what is your take on that? Well, that is the high bar we're talking about again that frankly was a little bit odd to note that that was the new criteria and the element to set about the actual complicity in the hacking element of it. Remember, we'd already known from when that indictment was actually filed that there were going to be unwitting and perhaps other people that were named as individuals who were not actually named individually by Mueller in this instance. But what's so shocking to me about that notion is that we all know the cat's out of the bag. We're not going to get jurisdiction over those people who were a part of that particular hacking endeavor. That was a speaking indictment, more than even symbolic, more than it was going to be hauling them into court anytime soon to be able to take action against them. So for, the, for Barr to, on the one hand, talk about a high bar, number two, to know that we are not going to be able to see information in the redacted portions because they deal with the ongoing investigation of the IRA, which we'll never get jurisdiction over to ever be able to see, of course it leaves out there this possibility that you're going to have people who were initially unnamed, initially who may have been unwitting, or we don't even know if they were witting or complicit, we're never going to see it. It leaves open two possibilities, though, right? Because if his legal standard is that you have to participate in, in, in the theft of the materials, mm -hmm. it leaves open the possibility, one, for knowledge, that, that indeed the Trump campaign or Stone or others got a heads up that these materials were coming out, but, and you, you're, you're the lawyers here, but does it not also leave open the possibility that they might even have helped disseminate? Because if he's saying it's only, only criminal if you steal rather yes. than disseminate, is R that door still open? In, in yes. fact, the, I mean, I, I think Pamela raised a very good point that this was a very artfully um, lawyered section mm -hmm. of, of Barr's statement because he was saying that it, it can only be a crime if you hack emails and disseminate them. Is that if, true, it, legally? I, I, yeah, I think it is. Mm -hmm. But if you only disseminate them, it's not a crime. And there is evidence that Roger Stone and others did help disseminate the, hack, the, the big, hacked emails. And, and the way he writes about it, it, it it's, it's in the guise of total exoneration of any connection mm -hmm. to the hacked emails. And if you parse the language, it's a, it, it's, it's a lot mm -hmm. closer. What's interesting about that also is that in the section of... Uh, his remarks, uh, Attorney General Barr, where he talked about the unprecedented situation that President Trump was in. And again, you referred to it as an Oprah moment, uh, but I think Barr, when asked about it, was saying the president's state of mind is relevant to this in terms of obstruction of justice. But that said, he did refer to the illegal leaks 
uh, that President Trump was facing. Uh, in other words, when the Washington Bro Post broke the story about the fact that Michael Flynn had lied to FBI investigators about his conversations with the Russian ambassador. Uh, so Barr was, uh, his outrage was sufficient to say those leaks were illegal. Yeah, but, but meanwhile, he's talking about these but, other matters that took place. And he said, well, it didn't rise to the level well, of the law, which is, which is interesting. But, but he kept making the point about criminal intent. Exactly. You need to have criminal intent to prove that there was a crime. And he said, yeah, you know, there may have been other reasons why the president and his associates <laughs> yeah. were doing what but they the were But the president doing. never spoke to them, okay? The right. president never sat down with the special counsel's office. And we have to, maybe that's there, maybe that's explained in the report why that, that did not occur. But it's very difficult to discover intent when you're actually not talking to the person who may have intended to obstruct justice 